Thank you very much, David. Um, maybe I should start by a little anecdote, okay, which uh, when I arrived in Gilbert and uh, be very, very short because it went was a uh, flooding for me. But, uh, when I, but I'm totally self-taught chef, okay, and uh, from the moment I cooked up in a tiny little plate between the ladies on the way in Oxfam, so very unglamorous, and I cooked my heart out. And my first dish is I want to see my customers eating them. And I was very excited, and I prepared my two beautiful dishes. And my first two customers, I got became less excited because they were, they were stripes, they were businessmen. Okay, so I gave them two dishes, and I threw my kitchen, I could actually open up the door <laughs> and see the reaction of those guests. And they stopped talking about business. That was my first victory. It was brilliant. <laughs> Maybe is that better? <laughs> so that was actually brilliant. They stopped talking about business, and they look at the food. Imagine, they spent about five seconds stopping their business talk and look at the food. And then, terrible thing happened. They jump on the salt and the pepper and murder the food in front of me while I was watching them two meters away. Uh, yes, um, all my, all my life from the moment I came in with Britain, really, yes, being a self-told person, I understood that really, and it was a very difficult time because I had to basically train, train other people once. I was also training myself, but immediately, when I came here, the soul was always high. Sugar level was very high. Fat level was very high. Okay, and I trained my chefs consistently. And actually, the first thing you do when you come at the manual, you are put through a soul test. <laughs> Maybe that's what you should be doing in your kitchens as well. You are put through a soul test. And a soul test is very simple. I give 10 glasses to my chefs, the new chefs who come in here. And then I put two glasses without salt sometimes three according, then I measure my, my, my salt, okay, on each different measurement on each glass, on some very under salted, some perfectly salted for my palate, I'm the judge, remember, okay, and then some completely over salted, and I ask these young people to put the, the glasses to tell me which one has got no salt, okay, so which one is completely over salted and which one is right, and that seems to be a very light-hearted uh, um, light-hearted uh, thing to do, but it isn't, I can show you, because that does allow me to see you see, so the, the criminal, okay, who's going to completely kill my food by having an salted palate, okay, so effectively that does allow me to see the one who's got a slightly under-salted palate and over-salted palate. Now, I repeat that, that, that uh, I also repeat this test, okay, with spices and, and with uh, acid and sugar. So that's, and I've got a card of each of these chefs, and I know exactly which work I've got to do on their palate to ensure they don't murder my food like my customers. Uh, I would like maybe, uh, I think it's quite exciting to see what's happening at Bhutan today. At, at last, we are reconnecting with our food values, we are reconnecting with our food culture. We understand that food connects with everything, because for many years what we have done is to completely reduce food to a mere commodity, which only values and virtues are cheapness. And our system of agriculture was going and processing and, 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 and retaining was purely based on intensive farming, followed by any processing, followed by with a lot of salt and a lot of sugar and a lot of trans fats, okay, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a lot of sugar. Okay, so it's quite fascinating to see at last that now we are conscious of it, that actually food connects with everything. And the mistake we've done is to separate it from everything. So it's marvelous that there's such a campaign to really reconnect our food and let's eat healthy, let's eat better food. And to me, good health goes with good food. They're not separated from it. They're intrinsically linked together. So the things maybe you should be doing in your home, first, Season your food only lightly. Very much salt. If you have lovely fresh local ingredients, the salt is hardly a little pinch. No more. Let the food talk for itself. Okay? You have herby. Try to put a few herbs in your, in your food. First, fantastic, delicious, fresh flavors from the garden. Okay? Plus, it will enhance your food no end. And you will create new recipes and so on. So, the salt element you gave it. So then, sour, bitter. Put a bit of chocolate in your, in your, in your, in your sauce, your bitter, very bitter chocolate. Put a bit of zest of grapefruit, a zest of lemon, something bitter. Okay? You'll be amazed what these things can do uh, and help your seasoning. Spice, any spice, a bit of, of black pepper, a bit of cayenne pepper, can lift food no end. So of course, what I would advise all to each of you, and that's what I advise to my chefs, because after all, we're a byproduct of our own education, and because we have lost 
our food education. We have lost our connection with food. Of course, we ate a lot of salt, we ate a lot of sugar, and we ate a lot of fat. And we know the misery and the billion pounds that it has taken, okay, the toll it has given to governments and to the health service, and to millions of families who are suffering from all sorts of diseases, from diabetes, cardiovascular problems, etc., etc., etc. So it's a serious business. Okay, so I think, um, <laughs> So by your fresh ingredients, yes, that's a good one. Remo, I think I'm, a, I'm not very good at mathematics, and you realize that I'm at the 11th uh, <laughs> commandments, okay? So, so, so let's reconnect with our food. Let's also reconnect with the simple art of cooking. Let's cook. 75% of the food, the salt intake, comes from processed food. It doesn't come from home, son, okay? It comes from processed food. Okay, so not only the processors have got a fantastic opportunity to improve, okay, this record, okay, and teach and train the customers, uh, and, and we're talking about Steele's method, okay, so that means lowering the soul little by little, which would be brilliant, that's the way, best way to do it, okay, so I think it's really, uh, uh, so I just realized it's, I'm over the 10 minutes, of course, as ever, so, uh, so I think, uh, <coughs> So let's reconnect with cooking, please. It is so important. Cooking, mon dieu, is about, at each time we buy the apple, cooking connects as well with agriculture, what kind of agriculture we have. It's very important your food from thousands of miles away. Buy your local, so buy local food. You avoid all the food miles, you help global warming. So it's, it's very complex and it's fantastic. But learn how to cook is the most rewarding thing you can do. It is so simple. Believe me, once you know how to pound for a steak or do an omelette, and when you know how to steam something, it can be reiterated a thousand times. You learn one technique, you know how to cook. It's as simple as that. And I'm not going to ask you to watch my TV program, which is coming next. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about techniques. And it will, no, but truly, it will teach you the basic cooking, the basic skill. And it is so easy. It's also so rewarding. It is so exciting when you share that meal that you've cooked yourself. And please, don't use very much salt. Thank you very much for this message.